Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for uh, breaking free from the cookies to join us today. Uh, we appreciate you coming for our panel, maximizing time and attention of the board, leadership, and other stakeholders to sh showcase your program. Um, as you just heard, my name is Brian Michael, and I'm a partner at the law firm of Morrison and Forster. I'm in the investigations and white collar defense practice group, but I also do compliance, counseling, and crisis management in a prior life. I was a group chief compliance officer and deputy general counsel for 21st Century Fox, the media company. And before that, I was a federal prosecutor in the Southern District of New York and in the Central District of California in Los Angeles. I'm Susanna Bennett, and I'm super excited to be here. It's actually my first Ethosphere conference. Um, so I really enjoyed every one I've met and uh, spending some time together. You all have had some really inspiring uh, uh, notes that have gone right into my notebook. But I do work for Marriott International, uh, so I'm in a competitive hotel, so I'm here doing a little, uh, com I'm getting competitive research. Uh, but <laughs> it's a really nice hotel. Hyatt's a great company. Um, our, our general counsel actually came from Hyatt, so. Southwire is the largest manufacturer of wire and cable products in North America. We're also a growing influence in the electrical space, um, sell tools, components, and other um, assembled solutions and uh, a variety of services in the electrical industry. Um, I help lead our ethics compliance program, our privacy program, and support our board of directors. We've been on a um, really accelerated building out of our ethics compliance program for the last several years. And My role is uh, trying, well, as, as compliance um, strategy and global coordination, trying to, to set what are the procedures, methodologies, the tools for all the compliance professionals uh, within Ibedrola, uh, which we are about uh, 60 uh, FTEs in the, in the compliance uh, function. Uh, well, for those that you know don't know Iberdrola, we're a, a leading energy company, very focused in the energy transition and basically in the... You know, we don't necessarily need the best, but we, we want to make sure we're evolving. We have a really good narrative for the regulators and, um, you, you know, and a, a lot of times I say, you know, we, we've got to start, right? Something is better than nothing and let's understand, you know, how they're thinking about risk and then come up with, you know, something really balanced uh, that, that we think we can gain alignment on. We've had some success in partnering with the business units. I mean, Privacy is a really good example, you know, um, and we find that the business units uh, tend to have more money than, than the law department, which is where, where I report up. Um, and, and so, you know, you can make a case that Today, privacy, it's really, it's a, it's a customer expectation. It's part of our, we, we talk about taking care of the customers. And part of that is taking care of our customers' data. Yeah. Now, I, I will be very pragmatic on this uh, in my answer. I mean, we are in compliance 60 people uh, in a group. Six, six zero? 60, six zero. In a group that we are 40,000 employees. So we are probably the... the, the the most, uh, the smallest group probably within the company, with the, probably the smallest uh, budget. So really, uh, I, I think the board or the executive team don't really, uh, it's not worth it for them to deny any, that's my view, any budget to compliance because the risk is too high for the amount you're going to save. This is my, my pragmatic view. Well, then we can talk about other things, but this is very, very pragmatic. So. So there are a lot of areas to save money instead of compliance. We all know in compliance, I don't think anybody here is ever going to say, oh, I have way too many resources in compliance. This headcount is just too much, more headcount. Um, but I do think what we've seen from these terrific panelists, and I thank them for taking the time to share their thoughts and experience, but that actively engaging with your board, with your senior leadership, and not just coming to them when there's a crisis, but sharing the wins, sharing the information, perhaps even as the other questioner suggested, regularized information sharing. So it is really part of the daily regular cadence and thoughtfulness of a board will then lend to a board that really appreciates and understands what you're doing on your journey um, and your need for resources and for engaging with your employees and your partners. So I thank everybody for joining us today and I thank our terrific panelists.